Okay, people, so this is more catered to my channel. As you know, I'm a big Toyota guy. I have Tacomas, I have Four Runners, everything in the family. Today, I'm finally bringing you guys, well, at least a first look at the 2022 Toyota Tundra. I'm very excited. This one is an SR5, but I am gonna show you some different models too. But since I'm out here, this is the brand new Tundra. And there are, when I first saw this, I wasn't exactly sure about how I felt. Something that I really did not know about was the front end of it. It looks, you know, very like, oh, very upset and angry. This, since this is an SR5, the grill is more cheap and plasticky but i do like that they at least added this body color trim because on some models it's chrome trim all of them have led headlights which is a standard well which is a very nice feature to have standard and fog lights over here the trd pro models which there isn't one over here they have light bars in the grill which uh, i don't know if they'd work in you know a real life application but toyota if you have a TRD Pro, let me have one and mess around with it and see for a fact. But you do have Tundra embossed over here. And of course, all of these new Toyotas have Toyota Safety Sense as standard equipment. So a full suite of safety systems. So there's two engine op well, two, two engine options for the new 2022 Tundra. Since this is an SR5, this is the base engine. So it's all V6. Wow, I just practiced this. Well, First of all, I like that there's hood struts. There's no prop rod, but all of them are going to be 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6s. Now this isn't the 2GR engine. This is the engine that Lexus and Toyota uses in the LS500, the new Sequoia that will be coming up. That might be the new engine in that. And also the Land Cruiser 300 and the Lexus LX600. A lot of engines, a lot of cars use this engine. Oh, okay, I'm gonna keep going. Well, you know, this is just, you know, the, some of the interesting things about the auto show. So this SR5 has the base 3.5 liter twin turbo. It makes 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. So it's a significant upgrade from the 5.7. You just don't get the same sound, but I am interested to see how this performs on the road. I've heard good things about it, but you know, I don't want to say anything just yet. But good power for a base power plant and a lot of other brands have five you know like ford is still offering a five liter chevy is still offering their 5.3 even though they are adding electrified versions but speaking about an electrified tundra you don't get a plug-in hybrid necessarily but they call it the iForce Max. So it's the same 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, but it makes 479 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. That's very impressive too for Toyota. And especially, Toyota never really does do, you know, crazy power figures like everyone else. Toyota hasn't done a diesel engine. They've just been doing pet petrol and now finally a hybrid. And the way how this hybrid system works, it doesn't, the electric motors don't power the wheels themselves. It's actually just connected to the transmission. Something interesting, but the way how Toyota does it, because they've been doing hybrids for 20 years almost, or maybe over 20 years, they've perfected it. So I'm very interested to see that. And the hybrid is optional on other models and it's standard on the TRD Pro. So the bed of the Tundra really has not changed. Now Toyota has never really been in innovated with their beds. They have increased payload capacity to just under 2,000 pounds. It is competitive, but you know, it's nothing outrageous. And of course, it's not a diesel. It's still a one ton or half ton truck. Towing capacity is up to 12,000 pounds. Now speaking about towing and all that kind of, and all that jazz, the rear suspension of the Tundra has been changed from leaf springs, which are more rigid and you could fit more things in them. There's music, there's all kinds of things, you know, for people with ADD, let me know if you have ADD, oh my God, there's just so much going on, but we're gonna keep going. But like I said, they went from leaf springs to coils. So coils are gonna ride a little bit better, be more comfortable on the road, but you do sacrifice some of the, you know, rigidity of leaf springs. But I expect from Toyota in terms of off-road capability, you have 
just just as much or even more articulation. So since there was a bike, I have to yell because I hope the audio is good. Since there was a bike in the back of that Tundra, I'm going to show you the bed of this one. Now there's a few different bed lengths in this one. This one has, I think it's a six and a half foot bed, but Toyota is finally offering an eight foot bed. They had, or I think they've had an eight foot bed, but you can get an eight foot bed with the four door full size crew cab. I really have to yell because it's like I'm in a movie. But you can drop the tailgate with a button here. Doesn't want to open, but there's a button on the side that also doesn't want to open. Maybe we'll go to another Tundra and see. Let me show you. Okay. So now we've moved to this 1794 and there's thankfully less commotion. And this one is actually, you know, powered on. I don't like that they've used a push button to drop the tailgate. Now it's just damped. There's no steps, there's no nothing, but there is this power retractable step here, which, ooh, innovative, you know, not like they've been doing that forever, but soft clothes, or at least it's lighter. Something that Toyota is very excited about showing is that there's this button over here, which you could drop the tailgate as well, and then get in here. You could see there's cargo in here, you know, pretty heavy, but back here, I'm going to stand up, whatever. There's a this is a 12 volt, well, a, you know, normal power outlet here, so you could plug in your drill or whatever you plug in back here. There's also LED lights and then tie downs. And then also there's these rails, which I, I assume they just took them out, you know, for the auto show itself. But you could have sliding tie downs here. But of course, no fifth wheel in a Tundra. This one looks like it also has a spray in bed liner. And there's the camera for the mirror and you can also look at what's in the bed I'm pretty sure but we'll check that inside and then there's this little there's these two notches which I think you could put a piece of wood to separate things but there's nothing really crazy about the bed in this of course it's not like the ridge line that has a trunk in it because this has a frame but let's see let's see how useful this step is not too bad Another thing, so when I first saw this Tundra in person, like I said, I was not exactly sure about how I felt about the Tundra. The big thing for me was the taillights. I like how they look. Now that I've seen it in person, I really do like how they look. But it's just interesting and different how it's just, you know, the turn signal and brake light in the taillight and the reverse lights are over here. It's new, you know, people are putting lights everywhere. It's not bad. This one has chrome, but you could get painted bumpers on, you know, different models and you could, you know, get that as an option. Down here, class two trailer hitch with a four pin and a seven pin trailer harness over here. I have a complaint about the button here. Let's say your truck is dead. I mean, you know, of course you can climb over here and get things, but let's say the battery's dead. It's a, you have to rely on an electronic button to open the tailgate. That's why, you know, I think, more simple things like a normal tailgate handle like in my 23 24 year old tacoma or even the new tacomas is a lot more reliable so there's just some things that don't need buttons and this is one of them okay so we're inside well we're getting inside the 1794 this one has standard power running boards that make it easier to get in here but you know for truck people it doesn't really matter that much but the interior of this I'm kind of blown away, especially coming from the last gen Tundra. This is pretty impressive. It is big, it feels big, and I like that in this, but it's not overwhelming. You do have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Very nice job, Toyota. Four spoke, thick steering wheel, no paddle shifters, but why do you need paddles on a truck? Well, you have the sequential, you know, for shifting down when you're towing, but a lot of steering wheel controls here. I like this new steering wheel. Toyota did put nice, they finally added digital, full digital gauges in this, and you can configure it with all these buttons over here, but this thing is in accessory mode. There's a whole lot of, you know, interesting things in here. It's not that customizable, but there are a lot of, you know, things you could see. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, get lost in the menus here, but not too bad. And you have a boost gauge on the other side, you know, if this thing was on, you're like, whoa, whoa, it'd be pretty cool. But I like the seats. That's what I wanted to talk about next. The seats in this. Uh, Full-size truck seats are always very nice. And, you know, of course, they're power. 
four-way, two-way lumbar. You know, that's okay. These seats are also heated and ventilated, as you'd expect from the 1794 and the Platinum. So comfortable, so comfortable. And the interior quality is as you expect from Toyota. It's, you know, very solid. You have memory seats for the driver's seat, steering wheel, and mirrors. And these mirrors are also power folding if i can do it i guess since the truck is off it won't do it and you have a tow mode for the mirrors too which is interesting all four windows are automatic you have automatic wipers that's kind of cool the old tundra you know that came out in 2007 so it wasn't that class leading in terms of technology but the thing i wanted to mention now you have a little storage compartment here uh, you don't know you could put your wallet or something in there but this is the you know the the, uh, the piece de resistance, you know, you have this big center console here. A lot of storage, that's why I like full-size trucks. You have one USB Type-C port and a regular USB port here. It looks like you could put, you know, different trays and things to organize stuff in there. Two big cup holders, a lot of wood trim in this model. I like the wood trim, that it, you know, it looks like a hardwood floor in a nice, you know, luxurious house. But since we're already down here, these have a 10-speed automatic transmission, both the 3.5 non-hybrid and the 3.5 iForce Max. I like that they've kept a normal shifter. No, you know, no, no BS. It doesn't flop like, you know what, you know, in the comments, you know. Yeah, but you have the four-wheel drive selector over here. Something that a lot of people have been complaining about, and I guess I, you know, would have that not complaint, is that there's no four auto setting. And it is interesting, it's not like a knob or buttons anymore, it's a little toggle here. I don't want to actually shift it because that messes things up. But I wish there was a four auto setting in situations that you're driving in snow and the road is kind of patchy. That's for the full review, but the reason why they didn't do that is because these part-time transfer cases are a lot more durable than the full-time transfer cases. It's just how Toyota does it. You know, they do it for longevity. But on the right side of the four-wheel drive select, there's these different drive modes, which if I go into here, you have Sport, Sport Plus, Custom, let me go back, Eco and Comfort, and then Tow Haul mode. But that's really it. There's, it doesn't seem like there's I mean, this is the more luxury trim level, so there's no, you know, uh, different four-wheel drive settings, at least that I can find. What is a manual? You can... I don't know. There's buttons that I... I thought that was for the tailgate. Oh, that, I guess, drops the back end of it. Maybe this has auto-leveling suspension. Don't count me on that. This is, you know, my first impressions of this. But since I'm already looking at this screen, this is a 12.3 inch screen. It's a pretty big screen compared to the last Tundra. Very snappy and responsive. I'm actually very impressed. Can't see the mileage because I'd like to see that with the V6, but a lot of, you know, I mean, it's pretty basic. For me, it's perfectly fine. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto finally, because I know Toyota has been lacking in terms of that so at least it has that that's what i'd use it on and i like that you have hard touch buttons for the climate control it's dual zone up here let me see there's no third zone for the climate so i mean that's okay there's a usb port up here too but a lot of big buttons here oh the camera's working so it has this you know animated 360 view and then you can also let's see here can you you can customize the color of your truck why would you want to do that let's see what color is this one white okay but you can do this you could do this you could pause it but i want to see the backup camera well the thing is you know not actually on so i can't do that but i would imagine the backup camera is good quality toyota has been doing a good job with that traction controls here you do have an integrated trailer brake controller which is nice that's kind of a standard that I would assume, you know, for full-size trucks, but I'm glad Toyota is actually doing it now. I think the old one did that too. But, you know, there's not too much else to talk about. You have a nice wireless charger over here. My phone almost didn't fit. You could see in the thing here. Oh, and it's charging. That's nice. I could charge my phone while I'm, uh, you know, while I'm talking to you guys. But, oh, I'm getting an email. ADD, you know, you've seen the whole, you know, the whole commotion here, but 
front seat of this is very impressive and I like the dash. I love brown interiors, I really do. I'm such a sucker for brown. So like if I was to get one, it would be one of these. All right, so in the back seat of this brand new Tundra, Tundras have always had impressive rear seat legroom and this one does not disappoint. I can tell you one thing. First thing I notice, you have rear sunshades over here. Very nice, but that is because this is a 1794 edition. I appreciate that. Interior quality, of course, from Toyota is the same back here. A nice soft touch with, with stitching. I like that you have grab handles, but new cars don't have, like this doesn't have an O handle, you know, up here. I need that. You know, this is just for little grannies and short people to crawl up onto, you know, but I need that up here. I like that you have a panel moon roof in this one. I don't know if the, I think it's optional on the limited, but standard on the 1794 and the platinum. The rear seat in this, uh, so comfortable. I'm five foot nine. I have pretty decent headroom. Well, pretty good headroom. I'm not complaining. Legroom is abundant. You know, I can fit my feet under the seat very comfortably. These don't slide, but I'm going to show you something here. Uh, oh, I'm sitting on it. Uh. This is on the fly. Ah. You have storage underneath the seat here on both sides, pretty deep too. So you could put backpacks, tools, all kinds of things, but that's pretty nice here. You also have this center console, which it should have a tab with two cup holders that are kind of shallow, but you know, the cup holders in the back seats of things aren't that great. I'm also noticing that Toyota has retained the electric sliding rear window. I've always loved, oh, that's a cool shot. I've always loved how Toyota has done that because it's just a nice open air feeling. You have all the windows down, the sunroof open, and this thing for the dog or all kinds of things. But I also like, speaking of the back seats again, you have heated and ventilated seats back here. Ventilated seats. Toyota, I don't even think they did heated seats in the back seat of the last gen Tundra. So that's an improvement. There's also, I'm gonna look here, two USB type C ports? Yeah. Oh, one USB type C and one normal USB port. And then a normal power outlet. So you could plug in a drill and all kinds of things that men use. And then you have two uh, air vents for men so you don't get sweaty. So I'm very happy I finally could show you guys the 2022 Toyota Tundra. I'd love to do a full proper review on it. Maybe two of them, you know, one off-road type review and another just, you know, comprehensive review. But you have to subscribe to see if I actually do that. Well, when I do that. Let's not do if, when. But thank you guys for watching this video on the 2022 Toyota Tundra. The commotion is starting up again. I'm going to have to start yelling. I will see you in the next video. Bye, peeps.